Dear Minister Schulze, let's stay uh, just for a moment with emission trading. Based on positive experience with the EU scheme, Germany, in fact, has itself introduced an additional national carbon pricing mechanism for the heat and transport sector. And I would be very curious to hear how that is being received, especially by Germany's passionate car drivers. <laughs> Yes, indeed, it was not, not easy at all to introduce this system in Germany. When I started doing this, uh, there was a lot of uh, resistance. Uh, I was told I'm introducing a, a plan economy and um, uh, reducing uh, the economic ambitions. But it is not at all the case. Uh, I wanted uh, to enhance uh, climate friendliness. And uh, what we did was we explained it exactly, that we started to introduce this, um, this price system very slowly. So that that everybody was able to adopt, because um, you need to have an alternative. If I reduce costs for um, uh, train uh, journey, journeys and increase prices for flight journeys, then everybody needs to know that these prices will increase annually, step by step. But uh, we have uh, compensations for that. We have increased uh, um, other costs so that everybody can afford these tickets. It cannot be possible that only an elite can afford these uh, tickets. Uh, everybody needs to be able to participate because energy transition is something that everybody needs to be able to contribute to. And I think we were able to achieve this Vielen Dank. with our um, system. And let me go back now to Minister Trevelyan. You mentioned the energy transition council. Sonja Schulze just talked about the need to make the transition inclusive and just. So I wonder if you can tell us a little bit more about how you think that a coal phase out can be accompanied by a just transition. How do we not make this uh, essentially burden those who are already perhaps uh, in precarious social situations? Such an important question. Um, the Powering Past Coal Alliance has established a specific task force on just transition, uh, which draws on the expertise from partners such as the Just Transition Centre, which was established by the ITUC. The Energy Transition Council brings together the global political, financial and technical leadership to accelerate the transition from coal to clean power. But importantly, organisations such as the International Labour Organisation and the multilateral development banks are also on the council. And this council will always pay particular attention to the social and financial challenges facing this energy transition and look to work with its partners to create a, a stronger package of support to fully consider just transition as part of that green eco economic recovery, both from the pandemic and as we transition in the longer term. Thank you very much. And I will go back to uh, Minister Schulze now with a uh, two-part question, as it were, on phase-out. So coal phase-out and nuclear phase-out. Uh, we had an audience question come in just now in regard to Minister Trevelyan's statement that the COP26 presidency, the UK, will be looking to encourage countries to get out of coal by 2030. That, of course, is not uh, the target date that has been set in Germany, but there are indications that the transformation, the phase-out, may actually be happening faster. So how do you see that? And then I want to come to nuclear. Hmm. Yes, indeed. I do think that it will happen faster in Germany with uh, the law uh, on uh, um, uh, coal electricity. We always uh, look at whether we would be able to um, do it faster because we phase out out of coal energy and nuclear energy. And we have to focus completely on renewable energies. And we have to take into account that some things 
take longer than expected. It has to happen faster, of course. The quicker we can use renewable energies, the faster we will be able to um, phase out coal uh, energy uh, systems. And this is the particularity about the uh, COVID crisis. Um, traditionally, we would have expected the prices to decrease, and it happened only for a short period of time, and then the price increased again, uh, again by around 40 euros. The economy saw that, saw that and um, it will continue to be this way. So it is worth investing into energy transitions, and many decided to focus on a new, renewable Quick energies. follow-up question and, uh, on avoid, nuclear uh, and that phase um, out, because, of course, th um, there are critics who say, emissions. listen, if we're serious about the climate goals, we need to extend the nuclear phase out. But you indicated in your keynote you don't see that as an option. Nein, wir sehen das nicht, dass Atomenergie noch irgendeine Perspektive hat. Wir haben no, indeed, we don't see any perspectives for nuclear energy. 45% uh, of energy uh, were gained in Germany uh, last year from renewable energy sources and uh, electricity from nuclear power stations. This is not our future. They're not flexible enough. They can be, they cannot compete with uh, very efficient renewable energy sources. Nuclear energy is very expensive. When you look at our neighbor states, you will see how much uh, uh, the systems uh, have changed. And there, there is no alternative for renewable energies. And also nuclear power stations are not secure. So uh, we, sometimes we still don't know what to do with uh, the dismantlement of uh, uh, nuclear power stations. We have uh, allocated in my ministry uh, 1 billion euros to dismantle these uh, old uh, power stations. And uh, why should we opt for such a pricey option Vielen when Dank. there is energy and jetzt, to be uh, uh, Sorry, and back to Minister uh, Trevelyan with a question about the role of the private sector, because we've heard it again and again here at the Berlin Energy Transition Dialogue. The private sector must play a central role. Now, the UK is both a globally recognized leader in finance Finance, and as COP26 president has a COP26 finance campaign. So what are you aiming to achieve there and how will you work together with the private sector in this energy transition? Thank you, and thank you for recognizing uh, that this is such an important part of the COP26 uh, framework. The goal of our finance campaign is Firstly, to raise the ambition of public and private finance to achieve the $100 billion uh, goal that I mentioned earlier. And secondly, to shift the trillions in global markets to finance the transition to a net zero and resilient future. Um, the Energy Transitions campaign is focused on accelerating the decarbonisation of the power sector by phasing out coal, as we've been discussing, uh, and improving the international offer of support to developing countries to ensure that clean power is the most attractive option for their new power generation. So these campaigns are working very closely together to mobilise the finance needed to scale up clean energy projects and grid infrastructure, uh, to support a just transition, as we've discussed, uh, and to bring about an end to coal financing. So we're working to strengthen the dialogue between governments and investors particularly in emerging markets and developing countries, and really to build confidence in the development of policy and in regulation, which can then bring down costs and draw in that greater finance. And I would also, if I may, urge financial institutions to join the Race to Zero, uh, which is one of the uh, international campaigns running for the private sector, uh, setting robust net zero targets in their businesses and demonstrate how major investors will finance the green transition. Thank you very much uh, for that, Minister Trevely. And we have about uh, one and a half minutes left in our session. And so I don't uh, want to let uh, uh, our ministers go before I ask one more question about the EU and the COP, uh, dear Minister Schulze. So the EU, in fact, has submitted its NDC, uh, its nationally, or in this case, multilaterally EU-determined contribution 
for uh, the, the future. How does it differ from the previous EU plan? Has the EU upped its game? Because we've been talking all through the BETD about our need to move faster and further. Ja, wir haben auf der europäischen Ebene sehr ehrgeizig jetzt gehandelt. Yes, indeed, we acted much faster on European level because we have to think that during the pandemic, when we had to deal with so many other issues, we decided during the pandemic that we will increase our goals from 40% to at least minus 55%. And this is a decisive step that we took with other heads of states and governments, uh, namely that uh, we will anchor that in our own legal system. We described in detail how we want to update this goal, and I think that this was a big step forward and that the EU really Vielen showed Dank, leadership. Dear Minister Svenja Schulze, area. for your words, uh, many, many thanks uh, to British Minister Anna-Marie Trevelyan uh, for taking us through the uh, also the uh, complexities of what uh, you will be aiming for at the COP26. We wish you the very utmost success in your efforts. Uh, it has been very interesting to hear to powerful voices for the energy transition to powerful women policymakers exchanging views on this subject.